Reddit, what is your best I'm not even sorry moment? Story one. When seeing the first Iron Man in theaters, a family with five young kids was sitting right behind us. The children were talking loudly, so I asked them to stop. They responded with how rude and continued talking loudly. Shortly after, I asked them again, and this time the father threatened me. Mind you, I was about 21 at the time, and I'm a little guy, so fighting is not my thing. I got up and walked out to the ticket counter to complain, and the father started pushing me, trying to start a fight. The manager saw, and they not only got kicked out of the movie, but banned for life as well. Definitely not sorry for that one. Story 2. Once, I spent a summer teaching English to middle schoolers in Korea. My mode of transportation was a small 50cc moped. One day, on my way to school, I saw someone fling a plastic bag full of trash out their car window. I stopped to pick up the filth and stuff it back into the bag, marveling at how much trash this punk thought was okay to dump out on the side of the road. This was a very pristine and more rural part of the country. Urging my scooter as fast as it would go, I caught up to the car, now sitting at a red light. Curiosity got the best of me, and I couldn't help but look over to see what this seaball secchi looked like. To my surprise, I saw two punk peach white kids who, upon seeing me peer into their car, started chanting Ching Chong Ling Long. In a state of righteous fury and embarrassment, I untied the trash-filled bag and hurled it through the open passenger window. Go litter in your own Ono oh country. Edit. No, I am not the YouTube vlogger Mortith13. Oh no, you people for linking me his videos, though, I can't stop watching. Story 3. When I was working at an airsoft field, we had parties come in all the time. One party, the birthday kid was being a total banana to his friends, shooting really close, not calling hits, and yelling that he hit people when he never did. So me and my coworker had had enough of this kid being a banana. So we decided to let the boss's son play. He's really competitive, doesn't really know how to take it easy, but on the opposite team. We told him to be really tough on the birthday kid for a game or two to teach him a little lesson. However, the boss's son just went nuts after the birthday kid shot him in the back of the head really close. Typically, you tell someone to surrender, and they just go back to respawn. Needless to say, the boss's son get really pissed and just lit the kid up point blank full auto. The birthday kid started bawling and the party left early. My boss just asked if he was being a LB, little illegitimate child, and when we said yes, he just shrugged. None of us gave a, oh no. Edit. Reading some of the stories below has been really funny. It's nice to know assholes get their punishment. Story four. I smashed someone's window to save their dog in the middle of the summer. The dog was locked in the car and was showing heat stroke. He was lying on the car seat, barely responsive. A security guard was there, but he'd lose his job if he did anything but call the police. I went back to my car for my tire iron. He half-heartedly tried to stop me, but didn't wait to see me pull the dog so he could get it some water from the mall. It took the owner another 45 minutes to come out. He wanted the police that were there, writing him a ticket for animal endangerment along with animal control there to take the dog, to arrest me for destruction of property. Nothing happened after. I wasn't arrested. He didn't press civil charges. He paid the fine and didn't even attempt to get the dog back. It was adopted, not euthanized as well. Story five. In college, I used to work at the computer center's help desk. This was back before everybody and their dog had their own laptop. So the university provided machines for general use. Anyway, we had a contingent of non-student hangers on who frequented the computer center because, well, they were the worst, most stereotypical examples of the no-life, unwashed, role-playing nerds. One time, this one guy, a well-known and recognized example of his species, comes up and asks if I have a calculator he can borrow. I figure no big deal. He's in the place all the time. So I loan him my calculator a nice scientific calculator which was basically top of the line from the pre-graphing calculator era. Besides, it's got my name etched on the back because of that time I lost my calculator in high school, so why not? My shift ends. I walk up to him and say, I have to go. Can I get my calculator back? He says. Can I borrow it until tomorrow? I figure, hey, the guy's at the computer center all the flipping time. It's not like he's not going to be here tomorrow, so I say sure. And yes, I was young and naive. Next day comes, he shows up. I ask him for my calculator. He looks straight at me with his soulless, beady eyes and says, What calculator? The one you borrowed from me yesterday. I didn't borrow a calculator from you. This being basically the ballsiest, most utterly bald-faced lie anyone had ever told me, and me not expecting that response, it caught me kind of flat-footed. But there wasn't much I could do, so I left. 
Fast forward a month or so. Same jackass shows up in the computer room in my asterisk dorm asterisk, stinking up the place with his unwashed smoker stench. He hangs out, plays games on the mainframe using some other student's stolen account and password, tries to pick up chicks on IRC, yada yada, then leaves. And leaves his backpack behind. I go through his backpack, looking for my oh no calculator. It's not there, of course. What is there, though, is a nice felt bat of gaming dice. Which is cool since I played DD with a bunch of guys in the dorms on Saturdays. So I snag the dice, stash them in my room, and leave the backpack. Next day he comes back looking for his scummy satchel. It's right there. He's relieved to find it. He looks through it, gets that befuddled, where's my cow? Look on his face. He scans the room, sees me. He asks, where's my dice bag? I look him square in the face and say, what dice bag? I played DD for asterisk years asterisk with those dice. And I'm totally not even sorry. Edit felt bag, not felt bad dough. Edit top comment, whoa. Not expecting it for this, but hey, thanks. Story six, just last night. I was supposed to attend a big BBQ for Canada Day, and in the morning I got a call from my boss. Hey, can you come in? So-and-so called in sick and we don't have anyone else who can. After a moment I recalled that so-and-so had asked me to cover her shift last night so she could go to her cottage. Without even thinking, I blurted out, What the fudge? She said she needed me to cover it on Wednesday so she could go up north. Check Facebook. Sure enough, pictures of her drunk. One with her on the phone captioned, calling in sick. Suck it, asterisk, company name, asterisk. My boss said, not again. This is the fourth time in the last three months. She is suspended for two weeks. Not even sorry, what did she learn? One, book things off. Two, don't have your boss on Facebook. Three, don't steal my smokes. Story seven, fair warning, this is going to be long, but it's the most justice boner-inducing story I have. I was 17 and had just recently gotten my license, and my parents were fortunate enough to get me a somewhat decent car. It was the summer before my senior year, and I was feeling pretty on top of the world. I had a good GPA, was a four-year letterman in track and field, and had a good amount of friends, but with these came a few people who were less than fond of me. One Friday night, I was wrapping up and about to go to sleep around 12.30, when all of a sudden I heard a noise outside my window, which was overlooking my driveway. I looked out my window in time to see some people running away through my backyard, get in their car that was parked in the street a good distance past my backyard, and leave. I went outside to check out the damage report to find they had thrown half a dozen eggs at my car. I cleaned it off no problem, then went to sleep, pretty apathetic at the time because I was dead tired. Fast forward to the Friday the following week. Same exact thing happens. Now I get slightly annoyed. Once I could tolerate, but oh no, it if I'm going to let it happen again. Sadly for them, I happen to be a very smart, unpleasant person who loves nothing more than a good revenge prank. They had made the all to crucial mistake of repeating themselves, though. The next Friday, I was ready. I hid in some bushes in my friend's ghillie suit. We were pretty into airsoft at the time. I had actually gotten it for him as a birthday gift. Right, where they had parked the last two Fridays. Then lo and behold, they returned again for a third time. As soon as they were out of earshot... I jumped out from the bush and absolutely covered every window on their car with that car paint stuff people use to write stuff on their cars with, then hide in the bushes again. They returned shortly afterwards and flipped the fudge out. They were yelling and screaming obscenities and it was the maddest I've ever seen someone else get. Then the most spectacular, beautiful thing ever happened. The cops showed up, right as a neighbor came out to tell him to shut up. You bet your peach, he told the cop what was up cop handed the kid a ticket for unruly behavior or something of the sort and just left, totally ignoring his multicolor car. He ended up with a fine and having to drive home with his head out his window. Plus, he didn't even get to egg my car because my dog was out and scared him away. It was a good night. Needless to say, no one pranked me again for quite some time. Story eight. In the middle of a family holiday, my really outspoken aunt was giving me cow about being young, immature, and not having to take care of myself. I was a junior in college and living off loans, and when they could, the generosity of my parents at the time. She was saying things like, well, I had my own house and a job by the time I was your age, blah, blah, blah. I have a temper, which I usually keep on tight hold at family functions. But when she spit out, you don't have to worry about anything. I was married and raising two girls at your age, I snapped back. And how did that work out for you? Her husband ended up cheating and left her. Everyone was shocked and watched us in silence until she quietly sat back and said, 
Good point. She's been really nice and supportive to me ever since. Story 9. In high school, I played a prank on a girl that spun out of control pretty fast. I had a fake lottery ticket that won $10,000 and had it placed on the table so that she would see it when she walked by, and she'd be there when I won. I honestly don't recall what I expected to happen after that, or why that was a prank. What happened? She asked if she could scratch it off asterisk for asterisk me, went to a table behind where I was sitting, and when I heard the gasp OMG, I whirled around and said, what, what did I win? She looked me straight in the eye. I'll never forget this, and she said no. I demanded my ticket to verify. She got up and ran. I chased her around study hall until the teacher made us sit back down. I glared bloody murder while she smiled smugly across the tables at me and flipped over the back of the ticket to see how to redeem it. I maintained a straight face, but I could see the look in her eyes changing as she read the back of the fake ticket. Mail to 777 North Pole within 30 seconds of scratching. Valid only in your dreams. She looked up at me, her rage more than genuine, her eyes two shining red portals into the deepest depths of hell. That was the day I looked into the darkness and smiled. Story 10. Haven't done it yet, but I will shortly. I have a two-family house. We live in one part and rent the apartment. Back in November, my tenants announced that they would no longer be paying the rent and had no intention of leaving until they got thrown out, which would be six months or more since we are in NYC. This has been a great financial burden for me and extremely stressful for my wife, who cries almost every night as they laugh in her face, yell at her and so forth, for no good reason, may I add. They are just jerks. Now I am an attorney. I don't know much about landlord-tenant law, but I am in the process of getting them out. What I do know is litigation. Once I get them out with a judgment for whatever back rent they owe, I will haunt them for years to come until they pay it, which they never will. I will garnish everything I can find, have the marshal taking their assets, freeze their bank accounts, notify the credit bureaus, subpoena them for depositions, etc. If and when they mess up, I'll get them for contempt and get an arrest warrant issued. In short, I will do $100,000 of legal work to go after whatever paltry judgment I get, knowing I'll never see much, if any of the money. They don't think it will happen because nobody would normally pay a lawyer to do that much. They will think bankruptcy will get them out of it, but I'll litigate with them in bankruptcy court and stand a decent chance of ruining their bankruptcy. Update 1. I went away upstate on vacation for a week, so used the post office's hold-your-mail service, knowing I couldn't ask these jerks to hold my mail. Even though they were supposed to hold only my mail, the post office apparently screwed up and held all of the mail to the house. I came home and they were all angry, complaining that their mail had been held. I told them to go talk to the post office. Anyway, they're supposed to be out by the 31st. I've already made arrangements with the marshal if they don't leave. I don't know how long it takes the marshal to show up. Hopefully September 1st, but I suspect it will take longer. If they don't leave and the marshal has to throw them out, I'll record it and put it up on YouTube. Once they are out, the real fun can begin. Update 2. Last week, I had some people come who wanted to see the apartment to potentially rent it once these people are out. The jerks were home but wouldn't let them come in to look, but they could come on Wednesday at 8. The people come back on Wednesday at the agreed time, and of course, my tenants aren't home and won't answer their cell phones. I leave them a message saying that's not right to do this to people who have nothing to do with our situation. As if they care. Fast forward to August 30th. I leave a message to make sure they are going to be out as stipulated in court on August 31st. No answer, no call back. I knock on the door. They tell me they will be leaving the next day on schedule. Needless to say, they weren't, but I told them it was no problem as I had the marshal coming. This was a bit of a lie because I found out that once you have the judgment of eviction, the marshal takes another six weeks to actually come and get them out. Anyway, they finally left yesterday, September 2nd. Amazingly, the apartment wasn't destroyed, though it needs some work now and it needs to be painted. My wife is taking pictures and I'm going to get estimates for repair and cleaning. Now that they are out, I'm going to go back to court and ask that the judgment be restored to the full amount because they overstayed what they agreed to. I'll also start a separate lawsuit for repair costs and the marshal fee. They won't give that back even though they won't have to come now. I'm going to start hitting his occasional employers with notices of garnishment. I'll send information subpoenas to his employers and family members, haul them in for depositions and, when they don't show up, Ask for arrest warrants for contempt of court. Once I get the new address, I'm going to contact his new landlord and let them know that if they ever need to sue or evict them, I'll do it for free. I'm also thinking of contacting the companies on their credit reports and seeing if I can purchase the old debt cheap, just so I can go after them with that too. I'll send a letter to Social Security, 
maybe with a copy of the video of him moving his stuff, just to let them know that he's scamming and not really disabled. I have a few other things in store, but I think I'll start here. I'm also considering contacting the authorities because they don't send their kid to school. He missed about 50 days last year because mom can't get up in the morning to bring him. This is more for the kid's sake than revenge. But I'm still undecided if it's the right thing to do. Story 11. On Halloween when I was in the sixth grade, my mom and I were at a function at my elementary school. There was an assembly, and after that everybody was released to attend the fall festival, which included games and a haunted house and all that. We noticed throughout the night seeing this kid a few years younger than me and his mom walking around. Every time we saw them, mom was berating the kid, telling him he wouldn't be able to win at any games and he was a loser. And she didn't know why she even brought him since he was filled with so much suck. Finally, toward the end of the night, bad person mom was sitting on a bench waiting for her kid to finish the cakewalk. My mom walked over next to her and pretended to read a poster on the wall. As she's reading, she inches closer and closer to bad person mom and lets out a silent fart that smelled so bad it should have burned off bad person mom's nostril hairs. I see bad person lady get up, throw my mom a disgusted look, grab her kid and take off. My mom turned to me, smiled, and went on like nothing happened. Story 12. I have posted this story somewhere else. Sorry for the repeat. D-O and sorry for the wall of text. When I was a senior in high school, I was an advanced student in my piano class, and I was also the student aide, where I also had to help beginning students because I was the most knowledgeable about musical theory and the whatnot. There was a group of freshmen that consisted of four boys and three girls, all wannabe potheads and posers. You know, like freshmen. I am assigned to help them practice a musical for the final of the first semester. I tried to help them, but they made fun of me and my appearance, my teaching, flipped me off many times, and they began ditching class. Turns out they only took the class for the easy A. I warned them it doesn't work that way, but lo and behold, they called me a bad person and ditched again. For the next nine weeks, they hardly showed up to class, and when they did, I would try to help them on starting the musical piece they were assigned. Again, dismissed and flipped off, I told my teacher, and she tried to deal with them. But let's just say that even with the help of the disciplinary office, they did not change their ways. It was a week before finals, and they decided to come back after their long absence. They started bugging and badgering me to help them because it was too hard. My job at the end of the semester was to ensure that everyone practiced and work hard at perfecting their playing technique, as well as practicing my own musical pieces. My job was not to drop whatever I was doing to help them work on something they should have started nine weeks ago. It was impossible to cram everything like practice and musical theory in less than a week. I refused, and I didn't bother helping them. I just let them fail. Edit. I was not sorry. Story 13. There is this kid that lives in my neighborhood. Let's name him D. Even before he was in his teens, D used to pour out the water people off just for the sake of it. On that day, I was roughly 16. D was maybe 10. And I was talking with a friend sitting on a bench at the playground. There was this big stack of soil mixed to small rocks due to some pipeworks being carried out in the area. D began throwing soil at my friend and I. So I told him to stop once. He continued. So I told him to stop twice. He continued. So I told him that next time I would grab his sorry peach and have him eat some of the soil from the stack. But still, D persevered with throwing soil at us. So I grabbed his sorry peach, put his head in the soil stack, rubbed his face all over it, and firmly press a handful of soil against his mouth. He shouted in surprise, which led him to get quite some soil in his mouth. After I released him, D ran home crying and shouting as much as he could to get his mother C in the hope that she would give us a good correction, as he said. So C arrives at the playground and asks, Did you really have him eat some soil? C is a kind of strange person with unpredictable reactions so I'd better be careful about what to say. But still, I answered, I warned him three times not to throw this stuff at us before I'd done that. And guess what? C proceeded to feed D with a little more soil. Not. Even. Sorry. Story 14. My uncle and aunt own a dog, a big one, not like a little toy dog, and they keep him in the garage in a cage. They don't like walking him, and they never take him to the dog park, which is only a few minutes' drive away, and they only let him into the backyard for like 10 minutes a day. I reported them for animal abuse anonymously so that an officer would talk to them, and they still have no idea who reported them. Edit. Thanks for the Reddit gold, dear anonymous person. As for what happened afterwards, an officer visited their house and talked with them, 
but they basically just gave him a slightly larger cage. They let him out a little more often after the officer's visit, but I think they've gone back to their normal schedule of a few minutes a day. They don't like walking him because he gets hyper when he sees another dog, but I'm pretty sure he's only that excited because he doesn't go out often and he's not neutered. For some reason, my uncle doesn't want to neuter him, and I'm not exactly sure why. Story 15. Back in middle school, I was in an honors math class. There were always the kids who you wondered, how the hell are they even in here? This year was no exception. For the first few tests, I noticed this one girl who'd always be looking over my shoulder. I figured, all right, maybe she's just looking at one question. That was until I started noticing that she would always get the same grade as I did. One day, I decided to put a stop to it. The teacher would eventually notice, and I'd likely get in trouble as well. So when the tests went out, I filled out my answers as usual, making sure she got all of them. She gets up, turns hers in, and then I start erasing everything on mine, filling in the bubbles with the correct answers I had stashed on my scratch paper. Next day, we get them back, and I've got a high mark, and she gets a zero. She was confused as fudge, never caught on, and never cheated off of me again. Story 16. As a little kid long time ago, I was once vacationing by a beach. After I was done building a sandcastle and returned to chilling, this snotty kiddo came over to my sandcastle and stomped at it down. So I planned an evil vengeance. Armed with a tiny plastic shovel and bucket, I scooped up some jellyfish near the shore, poor jellos, and collected a full bucket. I then formed a castle consisting mainly of slimy goo covered in a layer of sand. Soon after, the griefer returned, cheerfully planting his foot through my proud castle. But this time, his facial reaction changed quickly as his leg was now covered in jellyfish intestines and sandy tentacles. Story 17. I was out at dinner with my cousin one night at a Chinese restaurant, and his bad person girlfriend showed up who I hate. We were in the middle of eating appetizers, and I had ordered edamame. I was halfway through eating them, and I had a bowl of just the pods that I had ate the seeds out of next to the bowl of the fresh edamame. I always put the entire pods in my mouth and squeezed the soybeans out to eat them. Anyways, as she sat down, my cousin excused himself to use the bathroom. She then looks at the bowls of edamame and, not knowing what it was, nonchalantly picks one up and puts it in her mouth, chewing with a gross look on her face. She then proceeds to rudely tell me how gross they are and who would eat something like this. She had put an already eaten pod in her mouth and swallowed it. I don't know why, but it felt so good watching her put an empty edamame pod full of my spit in her mouth and eating it. I wasn't even sorry. Story 18. Background, I play a foam weapon fighting game. We operate on an honor system. You get hit, you take your hit, be it a limb or death or armor if you have it. Not doing so makes you a dick bag. Disclaimer. Our weapons are checked for safety, and when used safely, are not going to injure someone other than some bruises or the like. Story 19. My mom and I went to a big concert, and our seats were next to a really drunk couple. About 20 minutes into the concert, the woman spills her beer all over me in the floor between us. Whatever it was, it smelled awful. Then she gets mad at me and starts elbowing me really hard because she said I was using asterisk her asterisk armrest. Every seat had two. I don't know why she thought that one had to be hers. Whatever, I let her have the stupid armrest. My mom suggested we switch seats so I didn't have to sit by the woman, and I didn't want to argue, so we switched. A minute later, I look over and I realize that the woman's white furry coat had fallen on the floor, and my mother, never taking her eyes from the concert, was quietly using her foot to move it around in the spilled beer and other gross nonsense on the floor. I asked her about it on the way home, and she said very sweetly, Well, the floor was all wet. If I didn't mop it up, she might have slipped. Way to go, Mom. Definitely not sorry. Story 20. As a teenager, I went through the spiky jewelry phase. I was also a band nerd, and one year, our concert band attended a competition where the awards ceremony was to take place on a formal dinner cruise. I, of course, paired my formal dress with a spiky cuff and some Doc Martens. Naturally, I got some attention from other kids and other bands due to my unconventional appearance. This one pair of girls occupied themselves by wandering around after me for an hour, accidentally bumping into me. Then my cuff caught on one's dress and ripped a huge, gaping hole, exposing her midriff and instantly fraying the cheap fabric. She ran away, crying. It wasn't intentional, but I don't have any guilt over the outcome. Story 21. When I was about six or seven, my mom took me to a birthday party for one of her friends. There were other kids there but there were these two twin brothers who didn't exactly take to me. They had probably four other friends. One of the brothers had obvious anger issues, and the other one always supported him no matter how hot-headed his brother got. Hot head didn't like me from the get-go, but the adults forced me to tag along because we were all kids, and 
supposed to get along. Throughout the entire day leading up to the fateful event, Hothead, his brother, and their friends were being rude to me. I walked away crying a few times, but was always forced to go back and work it out. Before I know it, it's nighttime, and we're still at the party. The house was huge, and they had their own tennis court. We were all playing tennis. I go for a swing at the ball, but all the sudden Hothead jumps right behind me and gets hit very hard with my tennis racket. Of course he's livid, and his brother and friends back him up on it. Hothead tries pouncing on me, but is held back by his brother. Hothead wrestles out of his grip and takes a swing at me. Without really thinking, I throw a punch and hit him right in the mouth. My hand started bleeding because of his teeth, but it was worth it. Not even sorry, not once. Story 22. In 2002, I was in my tech school for the Air Force. My first roommate was incredibly obnoxious. We were lucky to get maybe six hours of sleep each night, but he would stay up for hours just calling every person he had ever known. Asterisk seriously. Asterisk one call had him saying, Hi, Amy, it's Joe. Joe, we worked together at Target a couple of years ago. On top of this, he had one response to everything. This sucks. I thought he was actively trying to annoy me until I realized that it was just who he was. Anyway, one day we were outside getting ready to line up for an inspection or something, and I just started ranting about him to the nearest person. I'm normally a shy and quiet guy, but I couldn't hold it in any longer. After complaining about my roommate, I turned slightly to the side, and bam, he's been standing right there the whole time. I just gave him a curt nod, said sup, and walked away. Very out of character for me. Story 23. It was during private school in Chilla, a place where a lot of douches go. We got to the basketball court first during break time. The basketball court is made so you could play soccer in it also, those two for one courts. Rich kids got mad that we were playing basketball first. While we were playing, King Shower, part of the douches who wanted to play soccer, started kicking the soccer ball at us. He kicked the ball three times, three times too many, and on the third it hit my friend on the head. I lost it. I looked at King Shower with the fury of God in my eyes, and he starts slitting his eyes to make fun of me. I am Asian, BTW, and he started saying chink in Spanish. Oh, no, now, now I am possessed. I closed my fist and saw that my knuckles were turning white. Without thinking, I went to King Shower and punched him on his mouth. Falls to the ground, bleeding. Stands up again, punch him on his mouth, and yes, you guessed it, he stands up again and boom, down again. At this point, his buddies are telling him not to stand up, and I could already feel that I was going to get gang-wrapped by the shower soccer players, but teachers intervened. I got suspended, and my dad asked me, why the fudge did you get suspended? In Korean, of course, it sounds much worse in Korean. I answered, King Shower needed some on-hand Korea lessons. Dad answers, oh, you need some medicine? And I say, no, Dad. King Shower does. King Shower was taken to the emergency room because he was bleeding and I broke his jaw. I am not even sorry. Story 24. I work in a grocery store, and a few years ago we had this old man named Joe get hired as a bagger. He said he was retired but wanted to work just to have something to do. Joe was a banana. He'd call kids fat, lazy, and stupid directly to their faces. If you scanned items too fast, he'd scream that you were trying to make him look bad, and then he'd have a temper tantrum in full view of the customer. If you scanned too slowly, he'd shout about how you were an unpleasant person, because clearly you were only going slow because he was old and we assumed he couldn't do anything. He made young girls cry, lost the store tons of regular customers, and yet he was never fired. He was spoken to numerous times about his poor behavior, but he always just said, I didn't mean anything by it. It's just how people my age talk. And the manager would just accept that as a sort of apology. Joe decided he hated me most of all. He'd swap spots with other baggers just so he could work with me, and cow talk me the whole shift. Called me fat, said I was a poor employee, and yelled everything he said directly in my flipping ear. Six hours a day, five days a week, I dealt with his cow. I complained to the shift leader, the front-end manager, and finally the store manager about him. Each time they promised he'd be spoken to and moved to the other side of the store whenever I was working. Joe would inevitably shift swap and trade registers, though, until he was right back working with me. He was my cancer. Until one day Joe wasn't at work. Then the next day, then the next. Word spread that Joe lost a foot to diabetes and wouldn't be working with us anymore. I was so happy I went out drinking to celebrate. Joe came in a few months ago to shop. He sat in a wheelchair and made one of the new kids help him shop. When he finally finished shopping, he came through my line. He insulted me and laughed about it so everyone else would think he was joking. I laughed along with him. Then I offered him carryout service. He declined. I insisted. 
I pushed his cow out to his car and then just stopped, stood there with his cart filled with groceries. He started yelling about how slow I was going and asked if I was planning on loading up his car any time this year. Nope, go fudge yourself, Joe. And then I stood there in total silence while I watched this flipping failure of a human being struggle to unload his cart into his car without having either his chair or the cart roll away. He never once spoke while he was doing it. He just shot me some dagger eyes every once in a while. When he was done, I took the empty shopping cart from him and pushed it back into the store. Joe never came back to the store. Fudge Joe. Story 25. When I was younger, I worked at the state fair for a nonprofit and stayed in a large dormitory which had really high ceilings. One day, these kids thought it'd be funny to cover this one kid's bunk with a powder fire extinguisher, but it got nasty chemicals all over my and five. Six friends' beds as well. Nasty chemicals to have all over your stuff? Not cool. We knew what asshats did it, and I had learned over the years of living there for weeks at a time that you could jimmy open the lockers even when a lock was on it. We proceeded to empty their entire locker of all personal effects, clothing, iPods, etc. We duct taped together about four, five broom handles end to end, and put loops of duct tape on all of their items and used the long rod we built to stick all of their items very securely to the ceiling about 20 feet off the ground, and we filled their lockers up with shaving cream. Not even sorry, I missed the fair. Story 26. Posting for my father. When he was in junior high, him and his friend would always build a snowman in their front yard, and whenever the older kids saw it, very close to school, they would kick it over, jumped into it, punch it, etc. So one day, my dad and his friend built a smaller-sized snowman around a fire hydrant and kept an eye out the window. After a few hours, the older guys showed up, and one of them started running towards the snowman and basically did a jumping knee drop onto the snowman, or in this case, the fire hydrant. His friends had to carry him away, and he was in a cast the next day at school. Ah, the 60S. Story 27. I was making close to $100K in sales at a manufacturing company. A couple of people in upper management and operations retired or had health issues and couldn't work anymore. The next generation of family management would not acknowledge the incompetence of the people they promoted into the gap left by the ones that left. I tried to tell them for a couple of years about what improvements were needed, but it all fell on deaf ears. So I walked in one day, shortly after my 21-year anniversary with the company, and said, I quit. They've never found an adequate replacement in 12 years. No one wants to work for them. And sales for the division I led has plummeted by millions of dollars per year. I make about two-thirds of what they paid me, but I'm in a much lower-key position on a cool team with no direct reports. We also adjusted our lifestyle to a more modest house with no mortgage before the housing boom and bust. We eat out once a week instead of two or three and stay at the Hampton instead of the Hilton. Other than that, it's all good and I'm not sorry for a moment. Story 28. In the 10th grade, there was this 9th grade misogynistic type bully. He would sit at the front of the bus on the way to and from school and harass these two girls by slapping their asses, touching their breasts, etc., which was unwanted by the girls. Kinda rapey. One day I heard one of them yell, stop, and he did for a bit. He went back and sat in his seat, but then, a few minutes later, he went at it again. Now I had sat and done nothing about this for a few weeks, but that day it really hit me as to what was happening, and I realized I was tired of it. I stood up from my seat in the back and walked to the front as he continued harassing the girls. When I got to their seats, I tapped his shoulder and said a simple, hey. When he looked up, he was delivered a punch from me that sent his head directly into the steel siding of the bus and fell unconscious for about ten seconds. The girls thanked me, and I went back to my seat. I was always the last to get off the bus, and that day, as I went to get off, my bus driver high-fived me. He wasn't able to tell his parents or the school staff because of what he did to invoke it. He had a massive bruise on his face for a week or two. I'm not even sorry. Story 29. One night I went out with a bunch of friends, and one of them brought a douchey guy. All night he was making sexist, inappropriate comments and wouldn't stop hitting on me. After repeated attempts to get him to stop and being a downright bad person just seemed to encourage him, I'd finally had enough. We were sitting at the bar and he drops his hand onto my thigh and roughly squeezes it. I stand up and full-on backhanded him in front of the whole bar. Everyone goes quiet. His mouth gapes open. And in the silence, I calmly say, Put your hands on me again and I will flipping castrate you and then quietly take my seat. The whole bar erupts into applause. I'd never backhanded someone before, but hot, oh no, it was amazing. 
Not sorry. Story 30. In my old poor apartment, I had some real classless douches living below me. Parties every other night until 3 a.m. Smell of candy permeated from their hole, and they would routinely take wet laundry out of the dryers and use other people's money, dry time for their own clothes at the complex's laundromat they would even get when caught. I once found my wet clothes piled on the nasty floor ten minutes after paying for a dryer. Super douche's clothes were in my dryer, so I took them out to reclaim my dryer time. I was confronted with the most douchiest string of nonsense on how I can't prove he was the one who took my clothes out, but he caught me touching his property. Pretty sure it was also the same unpleasant person who keyed my new car two days after I got it, but that I have no proof of. Shortly before I moved out, I am contacted by maintenance. There is a leak in douchebag's wall, and they believe it is coming from my bathroom sink. Maintenance guy comes over to check out my sink and confirms that my bathroom sink, and the sinks from apartments above me, is the cause of the leak. Douchey morons tells the maintenance guy that they are heading out of town for a week. Maintenance guy tells me, and all the folks who live in the two floors above me, how he is crazy backed up on work and that maintenance will have to deal with the leak and tear out douche's wall later in the week. Again, not a quality apartment complex. After seeing that the leak only happens when the sink is on full blast, maintenance asks us all to avoid flooding douchebag's main floor apartment by not using our bathroom sinks at a high water pressure, and to use our sinks as little as possible over the next week. My fellow renters also weary of douchebag antics, and I decided that week was an important week to use the bathroom sink for all its great uses. I think I had to wash my hands 20 times a day. I needed to hand wash all my delicate garments during that week. I know I wanted to make sure that the bathroom sink was as clean as possible, so I cleaned and rinsed the sink many times a day letting the water flow a little longer than necessary. From what I understand, many others in my building also felt a need to use their bathroom sinks for everything, including dishes. When douche returned, they found their apartment completely flooded, with much belongings ruined. They were out in a matter of days. I should feel bad. Story 31. A few years ago, this kid around my age, about 15 or 16 at the time, used to live next door to me. Around that time, my dog used to lie out in the front garden every day, watch birds and sleep. We let her sit out there as much as she wanted because we had a, we thought, secure gate and thick bushes surrounding the garden. She was a big, muscly dog, but was very mild-mannered and an overall big softy. Well, this head that lived next door used to purposely pour out the water her off and torment her because he thought it was funny. Every time he saw her, he'd shout and bark at her, throw things into the garden and be threatening. Body language towards her. This went on for like a year. One day, she figured out how to open the gate while he was tormenting her, and she bit him. He now has a chunk missing out of his lip, and his mom blamed him because she was aware of his dickishness. He tormented our dog to the point where she snapped at him and gave him a lifelong scar on his face. I'm not even sorry. We keep her inside the house now just in case, but she's still a big softy with everybody else. Story 32. I was always kind of a weird kid off doing weird things and completely oblivious to those watching me. It wasn't until I was graced by good looks from puberty that people decided the weird things I did were cool. So I had this weird habit in high school to snack on a sandwich baggie full of raw baby spinach in class. The teachers didn't know what to make of it because on one hand, we're not allowed food or drink in the classroom. But on the other hand, everybody was so perplexed because it was such an unexpected and healthy snack. Basically, the entire class would turn to watch me eat these leaves casually during lecture. So, of course, this one girl, the type of girl that asterisk has asterisk to be the prettiest, funniest, most charming girl in the class, or surely she will explode into tears and hate, decides to copy me. Whatever, man, go for it. Except she would make sly remarks about me being so underweight, so anorexic. No, I wasn't all the while copying my dietary habits. She was really intense about spreading the word about my weight problem to all of my teachers and friends for whatever reason. So instead of getting upset about the slander, I purposely did not give her a heads up of what eating raw foods will do to a person who isn't used to eating raw foods, a storm of diarrhea. I cow you not. I watched this girl eat an entire baggie of baby spinach, only to find out later in the day she had clogged the bathroom in the girls' locker room, that the asterisk entire girls' locker room flooded with raw sewage asterisk. The school actually had to cancel the rest of the afternoon classes for fear of fecal contamination. Sorry, not sorry. Story 33. I work at a five-star hotel valeting cars. We get really wealthy people in there all the time, and most are nice and humble, but occasionally we'll get a real banana head. 
Well, this time we were completely slammed with cars because of Sunday checkout. And this guy was being a real banana head saying we need to get his car now in the whole, do you know who I am? Well, I ran to the parking garage and pulled his Porsche around and while doing so, let loose one of the loudest and most vile farts that has ever left my body. Rolled all the windows up and turned the heat on. Guy stiffed me anyway, so I couldn't careless. Story 34. My mom's boss is a total flipping bad person. She's assaulted my mom twice, verbally abuses her, calls her a fat bad person. She's 145 pounds, I don't even, and takes credit for every piece of work my mom does. She gets away with it too, for lack of evidence and the fact that she's in close with every higher up in the company. After my mom came home in tears for the 100th time, I decided I had enough. I went to the office the next day wearing a ski mask over my face. The place has a bunch of cameras and found her car and I let her have it. Broke both tail lights, slashed the tires, keyed her car to my heart's content, and surrounded the area with sulfur pellets. I was proud and thought I got away with it until I went to the office to pick up my mom for lunch a few weeks later. Her boss saw me said hi and looked down at my shoes and started screaming at me incoherently, a bunch of you did it, you did it, and called 911. Police arrived and she showed them surveillance tapes and I thought I was messed up. At this point, my mom realized what I did and saved my peach so flipping hard. I wear black van shoes, which are fairly common where I live and throughout the country. She just argued how there's no way of telling who it is because of how common the shoes are. They took me anyway and questioned me, and after a few hours, they let me go scot-free. So worth it, not even sorry. Story 35. I was working as kind of everyone's bad person in a wealthy area beverage store when I was 14 years old. My task was to carry the beer or whatever cases into the customers' cars. Some of the regular customers were total dickheads. One particular unpleasant person always made me carry four or five beer cases back and forth because he thought the bottles would look a little too dusty or because he prefers the cases from the bottom of the pile for no reason whatsoever. It was an incredible hot day. Well, during my carrying, he kept his trunk closed and unfortunately, a beer bottle by a brand that was new to the market and that he received as a gift as a regular shopper exploded and ruined his Alcantara roof. It was my fault. The gift bottles were exposed to sunlight all day long, and I never thought of it. We had some complaints about exploding bottles that were given out that day, and we paid for everything, insured. But right then, I never told him about the others, and I did not mind carrying all the new cases back into the store as he drove off to get his vehicle cleaned. Story 36. I've always been small, always. Didn't break five feet tall until the summer before freshman year of high school. When I was about six, I was really into karate, and the instructor that I was learning from was very no-nonsense about it and taught me very well up until the time I was around eight. Nine years old, at a Fourth of July cookout, and these two older boys in attendance start following me around the event, calling me names and such. I just kept walking even though I just wanted to escape and it made me mad and scared at the same time because they were both huge compared to me. Maybe 10 or 11, but they were a good 40 pounds and 5 inches taller each. One of them pushed me from behind and I fell face first into a cooler and spilled the contents of ice and cans all over the ground. And as I was there in freezing half-thawed ice, I realized my dad was 10 feet away. I ran over to him hoping that he would keep these away from me and he just said, Kick their asses, I don't care. I was mortified. I had always been taught to never attack someone and that what I knew was for defense only. I was mostly scared of getting into trouble. Not today. I was lawless. I was Clint Eastwood and I was feeling lucky. I ran full force at the bigger one. He had a gut too and kicked him in the chest with both feet and all my momentum behind it. I don't really remember it mostly, but I remember them crying a lot and from here on out it's secondhand info. Once I kicked old fat bad person in his chest, I was on the ground and so was he. His friend was in la-la land because I just went from passive to aggressive in 2.7 seconds. I got up as quickly and punched him a good three, four times in the face and torso before he just crumpled. The skinnier kid, the one I was currently beating on, was the main culprit this whole time, was now on his back and old fat bad person was wheezing as he got to his feet. Found out later he had asthma, oops. I got on top of Twiggy and proceeded to rain down as many blows as I could Wing Chun style. Old Fatty saw his buddy was in trouble, so he pulled me off his friend by my hair. I smashed by a hand on top of his, effectively crushing his hand against my skull and making him release me. A sweep later, and he was on his back, and I finished him with a falling elbow to the solar plexus. 
He started dry heaving. I laughed and told him I hope he chokes. Once revenge has been exacted, I turn around and all the adults are speechless. My dad looks over at the father of Twigman and says, How's it feel now that the shoe's on the other foot? My four or six inches son just kicked your ten-year-old kid's peach, and I have half a mind to make this a family event. My dad is six and nine inches, and the other dad was average height. I know, I know. My dad is tall. I think it skips a generation. Bricks were shat by Mr. Twiggy, who hurried off to help his now tenderized child. Story 37. For two years in my mid-20 AS, I lived in a giant peach house with four other guys. We were all good friends, except for the guy we paid rent to and lived there with us. His dad got him that house to learn how to fix up a place and collect rent from people and all that good stuff. He was only friends with one of the other guys. We all tried to get along with him, but he was just such a thorn about everything and constantly trying to screw us over on rent, electricity, adding any dollar amount he could every month just to squeeze us. Not even joking, he wanted to charge one of my buddies an extra dollar ten slash mo because he started cooking more and was taking up half of one shelf in the fridge. I could go on forever about little things like this, but this is already going to be a longish story. It should be noted, at the amounts we agreed upon when we first moved in, he was already netting a $600 profit per month off of us so constantly trying to squeeze us for more was a shower thing to do to anybody, much less friends of a friend. He goes out of town for a couple days at one point, and naturally we throw a huge party. Two kegs, half a bar worth of liquor, BBQ, whole works. So there was this girl that was like his fantasy queen. She never gave him the time of day, but he was obsessed with her, always trying to take her on dates, buying her things, etc. She was nice about it and tried to convince him not to buy her stuff, but he always insisted. All of us wanted her, but out of respect wouldn't approach her. Well, she shows up since she knows us all really well and parties with all of us, and we all look out for her throughout the night. The party's winding down about 4 a.m. We're all completely trashed. The girl is still there, and we don't want her driving, so we tell her just take the owner's room and sleep there since he's out of town. She tells me she wants to talk to me about something she noticed and to wait for her in his room while she cleans a couple things up. I stumble back there thinking something got stolen, happened before, flop on the bed on my back and immediately black out. I wake up to a hard slap across my face and hear her voice, hey, OMG, I messed up up. This could be bad. No idea what she's talking about, but I can't seem to maintain consciousness. She's talking too fast for me to keep up. I hear her say something about assault and I'm still fighting to open my eyes. Now I'm thinking, oh, fudge, someone got assaulted at the party. That's impossible, is it? Slap, WTF. Now I'm kind of pissed. I managed to open my eyes to the most confusing situation of my life. She had me half undressed and had apparently started flipping me and freaked out when she realized she was essentially assaulting me and just wanted me to wake up enough to give consent. 